In this lecture, I'm going to try to break down all of the kind of important things you need to know that I didn't cover in the first four lectures. So let's get started real quick. First off, was it a war? Well, a lot of people died, but it's kind of difficult to, to describe because uh, Congress never declares it a war, so there's really no start date or even really an end date. Um, I put 1945 right here because I guess once the French are trying to come back after World War II and the French are our homies, we kind of are helping them out with all that money under Truman, you know, during the whole Cold War containment thing. Uh, and then our involvement kind of comes and goes according to who's the president. I guess officially 1964, Gulf of Tonkin, important year. Troops start actually doing the fighting. And then 1973, we finally leave with the Paris Peace Accords. But then Vietnam doesn't turn communist until 1975 into a united Vietnam. So even the dates are a little confusing. Death toll. A lot of Americans die. A uh, lot more wounded. 58,253 Americans killed. Um, the Vietnam War Memorial in Washington, D.C. is a very moving tribute to those service people who passed away in honor of their country. Um, there was a little um, thing I read once where it said if you were to read all the names, well, you could read it right there. 32 hours if you were to say them all. Vietnamese death toll, much higher. We don't know this one for sure. Um, North, Southern, Vietnamese, Viet Cong, South Vietnam military. The estimates range anywhere from a million to about three, four million. So I'm just going to say about three million Vietnamese people killed. Difficult to say because remember, part of it was the guerrilla warfare. Uh, farmers by day, guerrillas by night. Who was a Viet Cong? Who wasn't? Um, this is actually me in a um, Viet Cong Cemetery. An interesting little side note is South Vietnamese soldiers, soldiers who fought for the South Vietnamese government, uh, they were not treated so honorably once South Vietnam fell. Um, another thing about Vietnam you should keep in mind is kind of goes back to what this quote from Martin Luther King and he said one of the greatest casualties of the war in Vietnam is the great society shot down on the battlefield of Vietnam and what he means by that is there was a real uh, destruction of Lyndon Johnson's presidency and one of the famous quotes is he talks about the great society was the woman he loved but this quote bitch of a war ruined it and Johnson and his administration gets so bogged down in the war in Vietnam very much because of the decisions him and his administration made, uh, the spending and the amount of money that Vietnam took allowed the great society to be neglected. His war on poverty and his, you know, racial justice issues. So the great society suffered as a result of the Vietnam War because the Vietnam War was extremely expensive. And so a lot of money went towards that. Another thing you should be aware of is the 26th Amendment. It was passed just as the war is about to end for us. Um, 26th Amendment gives 18-year-olds the right to vote. It wasn't always the case. There was a big criticism, especially amongst the anti-war movement, the new left, the Students for a Democratic Society. Hey, why are young men going off to fight at the age of 18 in this draft when they can't even vote for the leaders who are sending them off to war? So now 18 is the age you can vote with the 26th Amendment. Another thing you should be aware of is the War Powers Act. It was passed in 1973. Basically, this is an attempt to put a check on this, quote, imperial presidency. There was this perception, probably rightly so, that the power of the presidency had enlarged so much so that it was, in many ways, kind of sidestepping the Constitution. War Powers Act says if a president's going to commit troops into a country, they have to notify Congress within 48 hours. And if they're going to stay, they need to get congressional approval and a declaration of war within 60 days. Uh, and then they have 90 days to withdraw, if not. Um, and this goes back to the Congress, which uh, has the power under the Constitution to declare war. Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11. I'm sure you all knew that. And then finally, this one I could spend like three hours talking about it, and I'm sure you would all love to hear it, but there was a severe psychological and political impact of the war. You know, first off, the trust in government was severely uh, just destroyed as a result of this war. The lies from the Gulf of Tonkin to the Bennegan Papers to the invasion, the secret invasion of Cambodia and the secret invasion and bombing of North Vietnam under Nixon and Johnson. And there was this feeling that the government can't be trusted. 
the Vietnam War bitterly divided the nation, you know, hawks, doves, silent majority. There was this, you know, did we win the war? There's a question that some people still disagree about. America's morale was was shooken, shaken, shooken. And a big part of that was the fact that um, many people believe that we lost. Um, you know, our goal was to stop communism in South Vietnam, and ultimately, Vietnam is still a communist country. Uh, well, at least it is as of 2014. And, you know, the big, powerful U.S. military ultimately doesn't achieve its objective. Now, some people say, well, we left in 1973, and South Vietnam lost the war. We never were defeated. So there's difference of opinion about a whole bunch of other things. You got also the thing with veterans coming back and, and the public not embracing them because of the atrocities that were committed by a small group of soldiers, um, post-traumatic stress disorder, homelessness amongst veterans, a whole bunch of issues. So make sure, for those of you that are students in AP classes or U.S. history classes, that you analyze the political and psychological impacts of the war. And then finally, it's kind of worth comparing really quickly the Vietnam and the Korean war. They're both in Asia. They're both a product of the Cold War, the fear of the domino theory containment. But these are very different with some similarities. You know, Korea was a little bit more clear-cut. Communist North Korea invades South Korea, and it's a traditional war with soldiers and tanks and battles and all that stuff. Um, and ultimately, Truman and then Eisenhower eventually win the Korean War. Um, how so? Well, South Korea is not communist and North Korea remains a communist country. Vietnam gets way more messy and complex. You know, you have two Vietnams, they're both in Asia, you have 17th parallel, over here you have 38th, but in this one, you have the Viet Cong and the heavy support for the communists down here in South Vietnam. Heavy support amongst the population. You have guerrilla warfare. You have a very different scenario. It wasn't as simple as North Vietnam was supplying South Vietnam, but there was a large scale indigenous support for the Viet Cong here in South Vietnam. So ultimately America, ultimately South Vietnam are unable to stop that and Vietnam quote falls to the communists. So read about the impacts of the war on government and military and all that stuff and uh, re-watch lectures one through four if you're completely confused. Thank you for checking it out. Good night.